So I'm going to start by just uh, welcoming Chung Liang uh, to our session today. Uh, it's an absolute treat to have him uh, with us. Um, he is, and I'll try to do um, the best short introduction that I can do here. Uh, he is a, a Tai Chi master, a master of also Tai Chi dance. Um, and he's someone who uh, weaves together art and movement and inner work uh, in really wonderful and beautiful ways. One of the things that I find uh, also, like just in his, um, in his life story, really extraordinary, uh, is that at one point in time, uh, Chung Liang uh, got around with the Rat Pack, which I just think is an absolutely amazing thing to have as anyone's background. And we're excited to have him with us today because we thought it would be really wonderful and beautiful to welcome movement um, as well, just following on the sequence of uh, elders that we've had with us um, over the last uh, few weeks. Um, and this time really focusing on movement and how our body And so um, we'll be diving in pretty much right away. Um, and what I'd love to ask everyone to do is, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing most people are very comfortable and familiar uh, with Zoom, but to be able to see uh, the speaker at the top right hand of the, uh, the screen, you'll see a way of shifting from gallery view to speaker view. And today it's gonna to be a little bit important because we're gonna be moving together and so to be able to step back from our chair and uh, to actually move together uh, as a group. Uh, and Chung Liang, maybe I could invite you to take uh, the mute. I'll take your mute off, actually. Maybe I can invite you to say hello to the group. Hello to everybody. I noticed you actually dropped a little hint about the rat pack. Uh, since you dropped that hint, but I want to be sure that people, I don't know the age group of people, this was my uh, history way back 60 years ago when I was a young student, uh, just graduated as an architect. And that was one of those little fling I did. Uh, but those are people, I have a feeling quite a few people tuning in, uh, our old friends even at least know that we have met before, at least know some history of why I'm here doing this with you. Um, uh, but basically I think it's important to, for people not familiar with my work. Um, I came from China. I spent the first 17 years of my life well trained in the classic way of Chinese. And during the war, during the conflict, we uh, eventually I came to Taiwan, to America, and uh, went to architecture school, became an architect. And then the rap pack, as you meant, dropped, and it was one of those flings that Sammy Davis Jr. picked me to go on tour with him. So that was fun. And after that, of course, my whole life changed. The dance in me, the old philosophy, and the dance became a new turn. And Esalen Institute and the Human Potential Movement began. And I was sucked in. I was invited by Alan Watts to teach there. And one thing led to another. Joseph Campbell came around later. And many, many wonderful mentors and helped me to sort of invent it creatively how to combine my east-west journey. My journey west become journey east, and eventually the whole circular motion happened. And I have, in a way, sort of invented for myself a Tai Chi dance. I use the classical Tai Chi training and classical philosophy to find a way to tune into the new human condition. So uh, my way of teaching is not traditional in a classical way, or the form way, but more of a reinvention of everything. And many of you uh, tuning in know my work. And it's been six decades of my life in this work. Um, and Erin, you and I met at, uh, uh, in um, Scortona in Italy. Yeah. Um, another wonderful conference. A, a long, long later. time ago, uh, Al, but not, not as long ago as, um, as the Rat Pack. Um, I, I just think it's a wonderful treat to be able to introduce someone that way. And, and Chung Liang, today I think we were going to dive right into practice. And I think just as a framing for everyone, 
Um, we've, heard, we've had David White uh, talk really, really beautifully about the way that we wake up, the way that we arrive in the day. We had Rhonda McGee talk about how we can take time to really arrive in the morning, um, even if that's just becoming present in our beds. And um, there's a wonderful exercise that I, uh, I think might be a wonderful place for us to start off with you, uh, which is um, uh, arriving in the day or greeting the day. So I, I, Good, that's wonderful way because I think, as I talked about 60 years ago, when, we, when I danced or said, um, it's 60 years later, I'm a senior. Okay, uh, I'm in my 83rd year of my life. Um, I'm counting my blessings and I may be a little more agile than most people my age, but still I'm an elder. And I'm thinking more about people my age or older or younger, but still are beginning to deal with the aging process. We're sitting here now and most people are looking in probably sitting in their chair. Eventually we will get up and hopefully we can all use our whole body still pretty well. Uh, for, for the time being, and more than ever now, I am thinking in my network, how to help the elders, my age, even older. I have many elders older than me uh, been working with me for many, many years. And waking up in the morning is a, is a, is a challenge. Um, you don't just jump up and suddenly become a Tai Chi dancer. So let's begin um, just by sitting here very comfortably, most of us here now. And uh, you notice I'm using a swivel chair because the minute we begin to move, but if you don't have a swivel chair, you can at least pretend you can turn around. But important thing is to feel you're comfortable and much more free with your hip socket when you're sitting. And I'm gonna teach a basic structure I call the Tai Chi ritual, which is based on four opposite. Tai Chi, the word Chi, literally means extremes, opposites pull. Tai means center, centering, the great human being center. You centralize, collect your energy from the outstretch into your focus. So the body is a perfect instrument. So the first thing you do is you reach up when you first get up in the morning, even in bed. When I'm lying in bed, I stretch up and down, find my length, okay? In the prone situation, you can even begin to do Tai Chi. Stretch out and both ways on the vertical sense, eventually when you stand up. You're sitting here, you reach up. So if you can reach up as high as you can, and you know your limitations. Now, if you just relax, you can feel the energy project further than your fingers. Now, the basic difference, and it's very clear for us, we have our own space here. Okay, which is we call maybe placement. I call it a place. I am placed here, sitting on my chair in this space, in my studio, in your room, in your study, in your garden. And I also can project the space beyond, higher than my fingertips. So I'm using space beyond me with place of me to find a stretch of Tai Chi. Okay, so we have sky above, everybody reach up and then and you bring earth below, you come down to your hip, you go down your knees and go down beneath your chair into the ground. Later, when you stand up, be under your feet. So you can just do a simple gesture by bringing the energy up from your feet to your seat, up your spine and all the way to the sky. And I usually encourage people to rotate the, pelt, the, the, the wrist so you use more rotation from the wrist. So when you finally go up, you turn your palms inward and then, and then up. Mm -hmm. So the palms are facing up and fingers turning inward. Do you see that? Yeah. So it's, it's a famous happy Buddha position. You go to Chinatown, the toy shop, you see this always a happy person looking like this with the belly hanging out. Show generous lower chakra. Okay. Now that is the first gesture. Sky above. Ha uh -huh. and feel the energy coming down, penetrates through your body, and go all the way down, digging down, first below. Now, eventually, when you stand up, it's the whole up and down, what I call the vertical Tai Chi stretch, okay? Now, that's the first pair of opposites. And you learn the second one. You open up from the chest, throat, heart level. Aha! Uh -huh. Literally, as if you're opening a door. Aha! Uh -huh. Out there, you say, wow! 
are there your spatially extending beyond your immediate place right here beyond your own place you have the space just open in front of you if you turn your body around you so that again is the opposite of G from your Thai center to your out there space and you do a stretch from way out there coming to the way inside of me centered here there's another stretch I call the vertical stretch we have the ver we, we have the vertical stretch I call this now the horizontal stretch outward spreading out bring it all in at this point I usually remind people feel feel the change in your body if you open out to the space right now I'm looking out the window to my garden from my attic out there the spring is springing you have the leaves and trees and flowers a whole different energy out there but it's part of your perception your energy now if you bring it in in your contrasting tai chi way you're bringing the outdoor indoor and how do you feel right now you're making a shift immediately consciously in your feeling in your awareness of outdoor becomes indoor space the space becomes a place within myself it's another big stretch. Now that's a second layer. Okay, let's remind ourselves. Sky above, earth below, the vertical stretch. Now again, the important thing is to feel the energy literally circulate up and down your body by your imagination, by your visualization, by your feeling, by your energy flow. You basically channel the sky energy down the body all the way into the earth. No. Sitting body or standing body later. And then you open up. You notice the gesture is coming from the heart, from the throat. Often I encourage people to say, ah, be sure your throat is open, your heart is open, your energy is open, out there. So you are more than just a little me here, you are out there as well. And you combine the out there to the in here, you have a bigger dimension immediately. There's another basic Tai Chi gesture we practice. And we can feel the difference right away. It's so simple, so clear. Now there's only two pairs. Now I have two more I taught yesterday. Most, most of the time when I teach, I begin always with the same thing because you are experiencing for the first time again. Just because you learned it yesterday doesn't mean you can do it now. Doesn't mean that it's in the now you're feeling the practice. Okay, the next one, again, from the center. You notice right here, I have a very special belt, which is Ming Dynasty, official belt, Agate Jade. Uh, I have to mention, uh, this is a gift that, um, handed down to me, wielded to me by my, one of my many, many mentor teacher, Alan Watts. And I had the good fortune to learn from him, work with him, and co-lead many seminars with him, including co-author his very last book called the Tao to Water Consumer. When he died, he said, Zhong Liang, it belongs to you from your ancestry. So since 1973, I've been wearing this, I call this Bang Tian belt. Okay. So I wear this on purpose because you can focus on my lower chakra here. So the next move has to come from this place. So everybody put your hand right here to the haha -ha place. So it's not what you think you do, what you feel you do, it's how in your gut way down here. So if you want to move your energy forward, later you take two steps. Right now, just pretend that you're taking steps sitting here. You move forward. Ha -ha. Okay, everybody move from here. Forward. So you have a forward, outward, and then you immediately come back, opposite, back to the center. You take two steps forward, you take two steps back. So you have an out and come right back, forward and back gesture another stretch which is forward back contrast to up and down out and in now you have forward action back reflection okay and go forward you come right back in tai chi experience you don't only go one direction everybody by now know the yin yang idea i always remind my students and people experiencing this with me in china we say yin yang 
we do not say yin and yang. When you translate yin yang into English, in other language, we often put the A and D to connect the yin and yang, which is totally anti chi Because yin yang, if you look at the symbol of yin yang, doesn't have a division. The division is indicated by a curve, which means the yin yang is always alternating, becoming one whole. So if you go forward with Qian Jing, forward action immediately comes right back to the yin and yang balance. Okay, everybody do this from here. Just move, move your hands forward, immediately curve right back. So the forward and the back have become one action. Now let me let me do the contrast. If you do it in a much more uh, cut and dry way, you flip forward, you stop and backward. Just like in military training, you go forward, you turn about to face, you go back. Okay, that's not Tai Chi practice. That's cutting things in half. It's dualistic contrast, which is pulling people apart. Your energy becomes divided. If you want to have a good Tai Chi energy, you go forward, becoming backward. Back become forward. Forward become back. Later, this becomes a metaphor we call fire and water when we get up and do the short form I will teach. Okay, so let's go back to the ritual again. Up and down, sky above, earth below. Vertically, let's tune in to the energy. And you have out and in. Horizontally, you have the energy. And from the Dantian center, forward back you have another contrasting flow now let's add one more which is the pivotal point in the pelvis now right now i'm using a pivotal chair because it's easy for me if you do have one when you need to practice sitting down find a chair you can pivot really helps you to open your pelvis what i'm working on now is right here the v-shape in in my crotch right here just right here so if I turn to the left, I want to open this pelvis area toward the left side. When I come back, I want to open this to the other side. So the chi, the power goes from below and up. They are not arm gestures. They are the gesture coming from the base of your spine, come up eventually into your arms. So you can feel the energy come up the back, come up the belly, and eventually cross the body, your give an arm gesture. So let's try this one more time, okay? Put your hand right here in the V-shape of your pelvis. And as you turn, the arm do not come up until you feel the energy coming up your back, coming up your center, up your torso, and eventually you stretch to the other side. And you come back this way, and eventually you stretch up the other side. Okay, now, if you don't have a pivotal chair, you have to imagine you go further. Now I can go even further. I can go almost to the back. I can go all the way to the back. So basically, the left and right become a whole 360 degree spherical turn. Okay, now one thing I want to notice my body. When I turn, you notice my, my spine. My spine stays in the same place. This is constant. Okay, now if I have a ponytail, it will be pulled up. It will stay right there, okay? And if I line up with something in front of me, I'm totally aligned with the center axis. I do not shift from side to side. It's not about going left to right. It's about turning to the left and turning to the right. So you're combining the left hemisphere and your right hemisphere in your big circular 360 degree global spherical sense of who you are you use your arm and finger as an indication of the immediate placement of where you are and you are in this wonderful open bubble you are the axis okay now as you can make this circular motion alive you are going beyond there's a wonderful poem by Rilke, Rainer Maria Rilke. I love that poem. It says, I live my life in growing orbit. It reaches out into the things of the world. This is the gesture. 
you extend your orbit outward, the ripple goes out. So even if you just sit in your pivotal chair, you can practice Tai Chi in a dimension you can never imagine how big you can go. Okay? You can sit right here in your pivotal chair. And as you begin to go out left and right, and your energy can expand so much wider. And it's the same way, but up and down can be so much more immense. Your out and in can be way out there. So in a way, and you're forward and back, you go a thousand miles ahead, you can come back a thousand miles back and have a journey complete in your life's experience. So it's not about how much you do, how many things you do, it's how you do something as simple as what we've been doing. For me, that is the Tai Chi practice. If you can do what I just taught you well, practice it well every day, you are in the flow. You are already living your life to the full. And every day will be different. Julian, thank you so much for that. Would you be up for taking us now? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I want to just conclude this. Uh, usually after we do the four, four part, uh, those of you who have studied with me longer, those of people in my network eventually, um, more continuous, we are going beyond. We are creating dances. We have the form gets bigger. We keep extending it. This is most basic. There's four sets of opposite. Eventually, we are adding the diagonal. We're adding more dimensions. Eventually, we use the Tai Chi practice. We have the, the eight trigrams in the I Ching, 64 trigram. Eventually, you can keep expanding, like the orbit keep expanding. But before we conclude this simple ritual form, I want to quickly share with everybody, join the, with a simple gesture. If you reach up and bring down and gather the form like this, like a big scoop, in a way you sort of use your arm, reach as wide as you can and bring everything you know, all the energy, and we call this Bao Hu, embrace the tiger. And then you come back into yourself, you settle down, you say, return to the mountain. You come back to the mountain. Okay. So this gesture, usually we make that to conclude any form practice and to make it an open-ended finish. This gesture we call return to mountain. We come home to where we are and begin fresh all over again. Okay, Aaron, are you still there? Right now I see a, uh, one person <laughs> smiling back at me, but there's still a photo of someone joining me. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, now you are back again. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is, I just taught you the four Tai Chi ritual purposes, finish with the embrace tiger, return to the mountain. Uh, for those of you to remember the metaphor, uh, especially those of you who have read my book, which uh, was published in 1973, again, read it, ages me, and you know how long ago I, I, I wrote my first reluctant book. Alan Watts wrote the foreword for the book, actually, after we finished our last teaching session together at SLM, and my book was, I look at the galley together, Alan Watts wrote the foreword for the book. And then he went to Europe to teach, and he came back shortly after that, that he died. Uh, it is so, so sad to lose him so early, but I was so glad, glad we had those years of teaching together, and he wrote the most beautiful foreword of the book, and Embrace Tiger to the Mountain. And I still go back to it and to remember how to say it, how to think about it as beautifully as Alan Watts can do it for me. We'll okay, see. We'll see. so we move on to, uh, to get yeah. up. Those of you can get up, okay? Yeah, and, and, and I was going to say, we'll try to track down the forward to send that out to everyone as well. Okay, okay. When, when you're ready, I will move my pivot. We're ready. So we can, we can then start. I will, I will teach the form, which is called the five moving forces. And then we can apply some music. My usual favorite Tai Chi music, we can do it together with the Tai Chi with the music. Okay, you tell me when to begin. Yeah. We're ready to go, uh, Chinese. Oh, you are? Okay. Yes. So we can stand up and do this exercise now. Stand okay, up. I move my chair out. I will move back. So you will have um, 
I will check with you so that you can see the full length. Okay, now I'm going back. Now I can only see myself very tiny there. Um, That's absolutely perfect, Jimriang. Okay, let me let me just better with you in the video though. Now about here, can you see my whole body? Yes, and you can move a little bit to your left. To my left. Perfect. That's uh, perfect. And I stretch all the way out. You can see, see, see my fingertips. Fingertips and toes. My feet on the ground. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Okay. For those of you uh, standing up with enough space, it doesn't take too much room. Uh, just enough within the arm's length you can do the form. Uh, for those of you who do not have space, are still sitting, you can do it in your chair. You can do the same movement and see if you're moving with your legs, okay? Um, this is the most fundamental Tai Chi form. It's based on the five moving forces of nature. Uh, five finger, fire, water, wood, gold, and earth. It's called Wu Xing in Chinese. Five, sometimes we call them five metaphors, and often translated incorrectly as five elements which is not correct because the elements connected to the four elements in the Western thinking is more of a thing. This is a moving energy. So these are moving forces of nature. Okay. Um, the first gesture, let me quickly show you the movement and then I will prepare you to go into it. The first one, again, going to the Dantian, to the heart, with my belt buckle up here, is the energy coming from the pelvis. You, you open it, you release the energy out, we call this fire. So if you're standing there, you just open your lower chakra and then allow the chi from the lower belly sort of gushes out. You sort of escort the chi out by turning the head. You take a step forward. Ha! Okay? Let's just do that. Ha! Okay? Now, if you do this energy, be sure it's not arm gesture. You have to feel the chi coming up. And then as you step forward, you need to follow the chi up. Now the chi, the fire energy keeps going up, and then you keep going up to the height. Okay, when every element or metaphor goes to the height, the reverse happens. When the fire gets to the highest, it turns into water. So you do a very simple circular Tai Chi gesture of fire going out on your belly, and to the height of the fire energy, and then relax and replenish with the water element we call the water metaphor of Sui. We'll just practice the first two. Step forward, release the fire, and keep going until you reach the highest fire energy. Ah, check your energy. You should be at the height of your uplifting energy, and then you relax. The minute you relax, everything change. Your arm become not reaching up, but become a receptacle. The water will come back. It will come downward, soothe your body, all the way back into your whole body. If you're standing, it will go down your legs into the earth. Okay. Now, usually when we practice it, we go from side to side. We step one foot forward, fire comes out to the highest fire and turn into water, bump back down. Now, usually you practice just fire and water, you just pivot your pelvis. Now, the other foot will be in front. You do the fire going out and up. And then you bring the fire down. Now, that's a two movement. Now, if you go on with the third metaphor, after the water, go deep into the roots, all the way down, and it comes up. It becomes the next metaphor we call wood. The feeling of wood is like a tree, the roots coming up the trunk and then and branches out. You make a full 360 degree circular move, finish the circle. This is your wood gesture. So you have a fire going up, water coming back down, and wood turn around, make a whole circle until you reach the back. Now the next metaphor is called Jin. It's golden crystal diamond metal. 
is that congealing crystallizing energy come back in down your spine and collect it right below the navel just like my belt buckle here the gemstone right here you usually do on both sides be sure it's balanced complete same idea of the golden energy coming down and tuck under your belt right here so far you have four metaphors fire goes out water come back woods circle around and golden crystal come back in congeal tuck under your belt right here finally the last one is very important once you collect the power energy right here in your center you need to take a deep breath especially long deep penetrating breath inhaling and let the exhalation release finally empty your body wide open totally empty to be filled up and the gesture become now everything will come back in and everything will pump out from the earth everything will come in from the sky everything will come out from the earth and then you collect this power we call this embrace the tiger again and return to the mountain when we say return to the mountain we don't climb the mountain anymore we come back to our mountain top it's a very important concept very important philosophy because when you come back home you need to be at the height of your awareness it's not coming down but coming on top of where you are now that is the whole sequence let me go through the whole sequence now without interruption okay let's see again if we can go from fire to water, to wood, to gold, to earth, eventually come together, embrace the tiger, return to mountain. Okay, let's do a little slower and follow me. Okay, shake, shake, shake. Um, when we do a practice, we do on both sides, depending on which foot you go for first or fire by turning the right direction. Okay, but that's any foot be fine for you. Okay, first. Let's relax the body, let's feel the earth underneath. When we learned the form earlier, we're sitting down, we're sitting in the chair. Right now, I want you to really feel the earth beneath your feet. You think of your body as a tree with roots going down, deeper and deeper, and way down and until you can feel the chair all the way up. We usually prepare ourselves with the same idea of the different contrast. Let's do the vertical one. We dig down, we lift it up, and all the way let the sky come in. And then we also remember how to collect the chi. Remember what's out there and what's in here. So we gather it up into the here. And we go to the center. We take a simple step back and then really open up. This is all preparation now. now. Really see your dimensions opening up. And then see your height and your depth. Now I'm ready now. Now after the preparation, we go through the five moving forces. We let the fire goes out and up. And water comes down and seeps through. The roots come up to the trunk into the branches and branching all around circularly full circle around and then reach back collect all the goodies into a gemstone down your spine tuck under your belt into golden crystal right here and we do it on both sides to balance that energy same energy all the way down from the center straight down and tuck under the belly right below the navel ha ha often i encourage more sound if you say aha you are not choking you will feel the flow uh -huh. and then the last one is so important often when we collect the goodies here we want to hold on we want to hold on we become congested but you need to learn how to let go you feel fulfilled you feel good you need to say let it go empty 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 it's a wonderful feeling to be empty to be ready to be filled again it's the first thing in the morning feeling it's a springtime feeling and something will happen to you ah one big circle 
bring everything in, then embrace the tiger, <laughs> return to the mouth. That's it. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. How did it go, Aaron? Uh, Al, that was terrific. Um, I'm wondering for everyone if you might be able to do the first Tantra one more time standing because this group is experiencing that for the first time. So just to see you do it and to be led through by that and then go into the second Tantra would be amazing. You mean the, the, the contrasting thing, you mean the, the ritual? Yes, the contrasting the thing. Yes, because this is the first time this group is doing it standing. Oh, okay. Okay, the preparation, okay. I'm back all the way in. Can you see me? I can't see, it's tiny a bit. Al, could okay. you move one step right? Now, one step right, okay? Perfect, thank you. Okay, now basically, let me guide you through. Basically, you, you just use what you remember, the vertical link, horizontal link, and the circular link, and you basically learn to tune in. So what I do is, I dig down, and I pump up, I open, and just create a big wide opening energy, and I collect the chi, I scoop it in. And take a step back, I open wide, and I collect the energy in, and tuck under. Basically, I sort of saw through everything I know about up and down, open and in. And then review the up and down again. After I open, I go up and down again. And I circulate up and down energy until I feel it all collected into my lower chakra. Once I feel the strength happening right here, you need to first feel the fire about to ignite before you begin to form. If you don't feel anything here, you can't get started. Or in, the, in, your, in your mind, okay? Now, the, the reminder is after, okay, let's go back to it again. You, you go like, you, you gather your energy together, okay? That's one. You squeeze it. You open it. You go up and down, circulate. Then you find, redefine what is in your center. And if you can't find it right away, I usually encourage you to say, ha ha, say ha ha. Use a nice, strong, lower chakra. Ha ha! Like ha ha sign. And really find that power. Now, once you find your fire, uh, simple, simple explanation. I usually ask people, are you excited? Are you inspired? Do you feel life in you? If you feel that, then you have fire. Otherwise, the fire is out. You can't get started. Okay? It's very simple. So, find something to get you ignited with life energy. Okay? And usually I ask my people around me, are you ready to wake up this morning? Are you ready to go into the day? Do you like the spring fever? Okay, okay, everybody said. Are you inspired? And I said, yes. Then we said, let's do it. Let's do it, everybody. Let the fire ignite. Uh -huh. Now, if you just follow the fire, water will come spontaneously. When you go up, if you, can, if you just relax, the water will happen. The body will guide you. If you just follow the energy, the gravity will follow them. Watch this. You don't have to think what comes next. Okay? If you do a fully, it's like if you exhale properly, you will inhale. You will not hold halfway and choke yourself. Okay? You aha! You will inhale. You will go deep. You will turn. You will spread around and you will bring it all back. You will tuck it under, you will bring it outside. And once you have it all here, you will learn to let go. Once you are empty, you want to be filled up. You want to fill up, you want to dig down, you want to pop up, and you finally want to bring it all together and you finish the form. Let me put on some of my favorite music. I have lots of music from Chinese to Bach to jazz to, to fun things. I'm going to put on one of my favorite. <laughs> 
piece of music, the Jazzy Bach, and a very, very familiar piece everybody knows from the third orchestra suite called Air on the G string. But it's played in a very jazzy way by a French pianist. And uh, I was lucky to get to know him way back. Uh, and he played beautifully. He's famous for his play Bach. Many of you know Jacques Roussier's Air on the G string. Let's use the music. Let's follow me, go through the form a few times. Just play with it. And then before we even talk about it again, okay? Let's dance it. Am I okay? Okay, let's just follow me. Don't worry about it. Get lost, okay? Let's gather. Up and down. Find your dantian. Release the fire. Let the water flow down. Penetrate deep into the earth. Sit up. sit down and congratulations I could see from time to time Aaron you are following very nicely I assume everybody tuning in are doing what they can and uh, and get whatever they can get out of it the whole idea is, is not getting it in detail but feeling it gradually and becomes your own thing uh, I'm not superimposing a form on people because Tai Chi is so naturally 
everybody's potential. If you just allow the chi to flow, and you become a natural Tai Chi dancer. My job as a teacher is to ignite that fire to make you become the Tai Chi dancer that you are uniquely yourself. And people following me for decades, not because they want to learn more details of structure, but they want to dig in deeper with me. And we learn to practice every day as if for the first time. And it's not more, it's how. It's not about quantity, about quality of practice. Um, it's a universal thing. And sometimes we're using Tai Chi with something very detailed and at hand stuff, right at your fingertips. But once you begin, it goes way beyond your everyday, simple the place of where I am into a spaciousness of who I can be. I think when I first was sucked into this teaching learning network um, with people like Alan Watts and Joseph Campbell and Esla Institute and all the early growth centers in Canada, we have Cold Mountain, now Hollyhock. In the East Coast, we have um, Omega Institute, Esalen, and Big Sur. In the early days, we have Kairos, and Chicago, we have another center, and uh, many, many places. Right now, everywhere. Now, wellness center. You call yourself well-being. Everybody is looking for this well-being within ourselves. I think especially at this time, when we're all locked in, uh, some of us are going crazy because you, you don't know how to get out of your placement into the bigger space which you're used to. And you don't know how to connect with people. And we're all learning. Uh, it's different than sitting next to you in a table in, in Cortona, face to face talking. But it's the second best right now with you, Aaron. Now, I, I need to learn to feel this without feeling I'm shortchanged. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chen Ryang, I, I was hoping that we could maybe just have you reflect for a moment uh, on something. Um, earlier, we were while we were doing a little bit of preparation, um, we were talking about how movement brings capacity for sometimes moments where we're feeling difficult feelings, or even, you know, as we might be moving towards sleep to help set us up for that. And I asked you if there were different movements for those types of things. And your answer was, no, it's the same movement, um, but it's done differently. Um, and I was wondering if you could just reflect a little bit on that. Uh, okay. right. uh, I, think, I think you're right. Um, uh, for instance, right now, um, as I talk to you, uh, my initial little frustration about having to do it, facing my iPad, by doing it, by making it alive, I transcend that frustration or the limitation. Uh, I think for all of us, at least, especially this time, when we're all locked down, we all feel a little bit housebound, uh, we become more creative. I'm learning, we all need to learn to be more creative. Um, and right now, uh, I am so fortunate to be right now at home with a big spacious studio, have a big garden out there, I don't feel cooped up in a little, little, tiny place. I have nature all around me. I can use this media to relate to friends all the way. Now you're in Paris, and we have people tuning in from Vancouver Island, and we pick East Coast and Europe. Um, so we have to find that connection. Um, for me right now, and especially after this experience with you right now, this morning, uh, I want to use the concept of gratefulness. I want to use words like counting my blessings um, and also feel very, very good about my inner power. Um, as I mentioned, I'm this, I will be 83 years old in a couple of months. Uh, I'm not as useful, as agile as I used to be, but after Tai Chi, I, I forget. I feel young, 10 years younger, 20 years younger, 30 years younger. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I tell people I know how old I am. The body has done it. 
We have used this machine long enough. But the Tai Chi practice, the spiritual, intellectual, emotional, poetic, artistic, creative juices running, that is my life's work. That is why uh, people in my network and all over the world, and I, I'm missing now. I usually, this time, I'm in Europe. I have more than 100 people usually come during Easter time in Europe. I will have at least 50 million people coming to Midwest to work with me. This summer, in, who knows when next time I can do this. But this is a new way. Um, we are finding new ways to come alive and to maybe become a little wiser when we get to the other end of the new normal. Chim Ch Ch Liang, I just want to ask, and sorry, just if I could just interrupt for one last question, just to come back to this piece. In using the same movement, oh, yes. how, do we, how do we use it differently? When uh, we're right now, we're going to I'm sleep. in the middle of my day, some of you from all over. I'm now almost noon time now in, in Urbana, Illinois. I'm at the height of the high noon time. Okay, now when I, I'm not feeling that high noon energy. But if you are early in the morning, you're know, waking up and you do it even more exuberant. If you are about to go to sleep, you should do the same thing. Quieter, more reflective. For instance, the, the fire movement, you want to wake up, but you want to say, let me reflect on my day's fire. It's beginning to simmer down. I need to turn the light out. I need to be sure my fireplace is not still burning. So you can use the same gesture, just slower, more contemplatively. And it's, it's about mood change. Uh, we have the same instrument. We have two arms, two legs, no matter what nationality and race and color we are. And we use the same instrument as the Tai Chi dancers. Um, your question is very simple. People often say there must be certain movements or certain things, just like we want to cure each disease with a particular pill. Tai Chi is a panacea in the most wonderful sense. You are your own healer, your, your own practitioner. You are on your own person experiencing life force, how to make it work every day. When you wake up in the morning, you want to use the movement to wake yourself up. Before you go to sleep, you want to use the movement to help you have a good night rest. It's a resting movement. If you're nervous, you want to use the movement to calm you down. If you're agitated, you want to smooth your energy by using the movement. There's different kind of fire, different kind of water, different kind of tree growing, different kind of congealing movement, different kind of letting go. So don't fix it, don't put it into a box. Be creative, be original, be unique, be authentic. You are special. You are doing your own Tai Chi. Each person tuning in now, I want to encourage you to say, I am a Tai Chi dancer. I've always been a Tai Chi dancer. I'm eternally alive. Okay? So you cannot fix yourself into a box, into a category. And right now, I'm more than just my age. Right now, I feel youthful. I can feel the spring in me. And but at the end of the day, I may feel my age. We got in the morning, I may feel my body as an older person, but the change in Chinese we call yi, transformation, metamorphosis happening all the time. Tai Chi dancing is the magic that I am so grateful. I learned that experience as a child in China. I'm so grateful. I opened the doors, my journey go back and forth. I can create, recreate, the Tai Chi principle in a universal way, not only being Chinese. Sure. So, so I hope this will conclude what we are hoping to do. And I'm delighted I can contribute to your network to help you to have this session. Chen Ryan, uh, thank you. On behalf of all of us, I also want to just share with the group, a week ago, uh, Chung Liang had never used Zoom 
um, had been resisting using yeah, Zoom. Were nervous. We actually got him going with Zoom and then did a test run of him using, this is the first time by video ever. You are my first teacher. Yeah, I was willing to play. My granddaughter tried, I, I didn't yield to her. She wanted Zoom with me. But eventually I will learn this, I will make this work for my network. And the people are tuning in now in my network, are sharing with me, they will be smiling knowing that it will work, so now it will work. Let's create a way uniquely for our network as you do with your well-being network. Thank you, so thank you for initiating me into this learning. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you for diving in the technological deep end. Okay. And then maybe just to, to bring us to a close because we have two minutes. So our session next week is with um, the extraordinary uh, Mirabai Bush. And so just for everyone to know, uh, we're really looking forward to that. She's someone who uh, is extraordinary in so many different ways. Um, and we'll be sending out more information about her as well uh, for next week's session. And Chung Liang, thank you for this. You're most welcome. Keep me informed, keep me in touch. And in the future, if everything happens, work out. And I'm sure we have many ways to tune in and uh, and, and your and network and my network, we are inter, interlacing. So. And Chung Liang, maybe with the one minute we have left, we can do one last run through the movement with you. <laughs> Would that work? In fact, let's, let, in fact, I'm sitting here now. I don't want, really want to encourage people who don't have space. And, and I often tell people, especially when I'm so internet moment in front of the computer, I want you to just sit back. Okay, everybody sit back, let go. You don't even have to look, listen to me and feel me and enjoy what you remember. Do you feel the sky above you? If you go, if you do, reach up to your own sky. Reach up now. You don't have to imitate my gesture. Use your body to feel the sky. Between your fingertips, you have spaces. Be sure you're not stuck there. Now, rotate your wrist and open your palms. Now, can you feel the sky coming to you? That's a receiver, receiver. Use your body as a funnel. And keep all, all the way down. Down your pelvis, into your legs, into the feet, into your floor, okay? Now, feel the vertical up and down. Yeah, you can do it your own way. Tuning vertically with your chi flow. And then open up your chest, open your heart. Ta da! Make a noise like ta da! Aha! Now get out of your little place. Be more wide open, okay? Even if you get stuck in the cubby hole, in the tiny place, you can just do one gesture say, I'm out there. You change your spirit immediately. And you bring that outside space into your inner space. There will be, you don't feel cooked down inside. And go deeper. Go deeper. Even though you can only move a little bit, you can travel a thousand miles ahead. Oh, my, my, uh, my, uh, my, my uh, iPad just slipped. It's okay, still there. <laughs> right now, I, I tape it on top in the back of a chair. So, so I'm going to put it back. Okay, let's continue until we finish the, the ritual. Am I still okay inside? Okay, I'm still so relaxed. Okay, now send the energy out. Let the fire go out. And let the water fill you up again. Okay, you can almost feel the energy going up. Sometimes I ask people to sing, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. To really go from the low Do all the way to the high Do. Now go up to seven. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Ha, ha. And then you pivot your, your body from side to side. Be sure you are not stuck right here. Be sure you open your pelvis. Now, especially those of us older, when your hip is not moving, you're really looking old. You see old people walking without pelvis. Okay? Okay, you gotta feel. Okay? You can see my, my computer is now still dropping, swinging. So anyway, I think I'm still in, in the picture. Okay. Anyway, and then you can relax. You can start all over again and embrace your tiger. Return to mountain. So, Zaijian, Chinese say, we see each other again. We connect with each other one more time. In the near future, again, again. Until next time, have a Thank great day. Thank you so much. Great day. Bye.